Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? disastrous for a president to, even say to be he's unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, terrible. Like <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Welcome to The Advocate. We're fresh into the new year, and The Advocate is marking its one-year anniversary with a special edition. And I think we should be popping champagne at this moment. Well, today's panel consists of a fresh crop, albeit seasoned advocates in their different areas of interest. Shegun, also known as Segalink, popular or even notorious for his end SARS movement, will be tackling a matter after his heart the issue of creating safe spaces for our youth. Nafisa, convener of Girls Just Want to Run, will be exploring reasons why girls don't want to run. By that I mean run for political office. You'll agree with me that this matter gets more and more imperative with each passing year. Bright, founder of iCreate, is speaking for the youth. No surprises there. Essentially, he will be giving voice to the voiceless youth and enlightening us as to consequences for all of us of their remaining silent. Abimbola, nicknamed The Listener, will certainly be doing more than listening on this edition. She'll be reminding us to put first things first as she addresses the foundational matter of family. And I will be ensuring that woman matter becomes all of our matter as I table the essential matter of sanitary pads. Unexpected, you say? Well, the advocate is nothing if not unpredictable. See you after the break. The things we take for granted are sometimes the areas where the shoe pinches, except the wearer speaks out. I'm talking about sanitary pads for girls in schools. Now, sanitary pads are a luxury in many homes in Nigeria. A pack of disposable sanitary pads on the average costs between 300 and 350 naira. For a three or five day menstrual period, girls will conservatively use two packs, consisting, I mean, rather costing 700 naira. In 12 months, that amounts to 8,400 naira. A woman with her two daughters will spend 25,200 naira yearly for disposable pads. And then we can imagine the cost if she has more than two girls. So many girls can't afford disposable sanitary pads, so they use washable cloth cut from anything. Pieces of material, some tailors, or foam cut from mattresses, and more. How many of them use these materials hygienically? That introduces the challenge of disinfectants to keep reusable cloths and other unimaginable materials used by girls germs-free. And disinfectants also cost money. So now more than ever, there is a need to supply free disposable sanitary pads or disinfectants to girls. Subsidize sanitary pads or just make affordable alternatives available to school girls in Nigeria. This will help both in rural areas and public schools in urban centers. Let's not even think of how women and girls cope in refugee camps and how much they need free sanitary pads. It's not cliche anymore that girls drop out of school because of lack of disposable pads during their menstrual periods. They also lack water and private safe spaces to change sanitary pads in schools. This is 2020. That magical year of the future, when everything is supposed to be possible and doable, is now here. And you may want to ask if this has worked elsewhere in Africa. Oh yes, it has. Kenya achieved that feat in 2017. And according to the BBC, Kenya stopped taxing sanitary products. For six years from 2011 to 2017, the government set aside funds to distribute sanitary pads to underserved girls. 
And there are templates across the world. There is Muruga in India, who fabricated an affordable sanitary pad making machine that has helped in getting affordable and quality sanitary pads to many in low-income communities. We want to take a look at KwaZulu Neta province of South Africa. They provide free sanitary pads to school girls. In Uganda, although the Museveni government bought, there's a sanitary pad factory making affordable pads for girls. Zambia and Botswana are making concerted efforts. Free sanitary pads is not a developing world matter. The Scottish government has launched a project to distribute tampons and pads to women who can't afford them. So my take, politicians should get real and factor this in when they consider empowering women with cash, as they often do. When they give 5,000 naira in this part of the world to a woman for empowerment, what exactly do they want her to use it for? Because for starters, it doesn't even buy her or her daughter disposable sanitary pads for a year. So I yearn for a policy on this issue. I therefore reiterate my call for affordable sanitary pads to girls in schools if we cannot make it free. And why can't it not be free? It is an item that clearly distinguishes a human male from female. It is associated with reproduction and the perpetuation of the human race. If condoms are free and are so easily accessible, why not sanitary pads? Right, so that, that's my take, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so, Bright, what do you think? I didn't think condoms were free. <coughs> that's, I think, I didn't, condoms, condoms, are, condoms are free? Again, in some places yeah. they're free and they're, they're reasonably <laughs> I mean, they're, affordable. They're, they're everywhere. I mean, you can get it anywhere, but free? I didn't know that. Yeah, I, th I, th I think it's a very interesting. I think one of the most important things for me is the fact that I didn't even know this. Like, I've always focused on technology, innovations. I've never actually focused on what is going on when it comes to women, when it comes to, like, you know, what girls face, especially girls in rural areas. And just having to know this, I feel like I'm basically making a pledge right now and just saying, you know what? Aww, thank I'm going to make a hundred thousand that pledge, too, you know? I mean, maybe. <laughs> Um, 50 girls next year, I don't know. But I think, you know, it's, it's on us. Um, this problem, you can't always wait for the government or... I mean, policy is important for... I mean, what you said about one of the countries that set up a policy to take out taxes. That's, that's a good that's one. That's Kenya. Yeah, that's a good one. So, apart from the government playing their role, citizens also should play their role. So, I think... Um, Thanks, It's Brian. good that we're talking about this. Nafisa, what do you think? Well, I, mean, I think it's a really important conversation because you'll be shocked at how many young girls actually don't have access to sanitary pads. You'll be shocked at how many of them actually use tissue, even in urban Lagos. You know, it's a really serious issue. We don't even exactly understand what they might be going through because it's not just the hygiene, it's the emotional um, pathway that they have to go through. They are suddenly becoming a woman. They don't really understand what they are going through and they might not want to tell people because other people might, you know, mock them. The and shame then, of exactly, it, the yes. Shame. It's, with, ordinarily, it's not supposed to be a shameful event. So there is no, like, supportive network and they don't really exactly know what to do. Some of them can't afford it. If in Lagos we have people that still use tissue, what do you say about the rural areas where, you know, like I said, you can't afford it or it's not just available? Right. No, this is something, I feel like this is something that should be a compulsory class in the junior secondary classes yeah. that both male and female should be aware of because it, it's not just enough to teach the young men how to take care of themselves and this is what is happening. It's also good to let the guys know that, hey, this is what is happening. So if something happens to her, be supportive about it. Don't make her feel For bad. example, mm -hmm. when the girl can't stand up because she's probably yeah. stained and there yeah. are looks here and there and she's even more ashamed to mm -hmm. remain there. Exactly. You know, I think that's a that's a really uh, critical one. That mm -hmm. boys also should get educated Educator. along yes. with the girls. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, I agree. I agree. I mean, it's amazing the things we take for granted, really. And uh, even though I'm female, you know, the way this has been brought about has given a different perspective of what is really important when you have females around you, whether you're connected biologically or non-biologically. And very interesting what Nafisa said about the boys being aware, because there's so many things that these young ladies get into that because of the let's say stigma of the fact that you're stained or you're using a sanitary tower, it becomes as if you're, uh, you're an adult, you're this and that. So that awareness for the male, um, male gender also is very, very important. And, you know, the aspect of us also looking at things that, 
you know, are not physically seen outside because many of us females, we're more interested in what people say, our wigs, our makeup and everything. Mm -hmm. But the internal aspect is so important and this advocacy is something that should spread beyond the physical. Very, very important. I actually think that um, because the conference season, the seminar and workshop season will soon start, we'll have the Women History Month, mm -hmm. we'll have the International Women's Day and all the milestone, milestone days uh, in the new year. I think we'll do better as women when we organize things like this and make the kind of pledge that Bright just made, mm -hmm. you know, to critically, realistically intervene yeah. and advocate for some of the things we just give thoughts and we just say. Mm. So men, for starters, will start taking us you know, more seriously mm -hmm. and then we'll begin to make measured progress about some of the things we've been advocating for for years. You know, that's what I feel. Yeah, I, I think you, you're spot on there, especially with the um, revealing advocacy that you just you know, shown us here. And I, I think that I'm seeing from different perspectives here, as a father, as a business owner, as an advocate as well, that this, the policy angle of this must be done in such a way that every single person, whether you're male or female, begin to look at how this affects you. Whether you're, you're, you're a male or female, in fact, if you're a male, you're connected to at least three women in your life, your mother, your sister, your wife, your girlfriends, and all for those who have many. When you're talking about if uh, a case of condom being free or not, I was just saying, I have to phone a friend because I'm not really in that <laughs> department. You know, but it's one of those things that we need to be very concerned about this. How, how exactly, given the situation of the country, the economic situation now, mm -hmm. how, how are our women and ladies around us faring? Exactly. So how, where do we come in? We need to begin to take this to everyone's doorstep mm -hmm. and begin to make this advocacy our responsibility. Because until we take responsibility and bring these issues to the doorstep of each and every, we don't begin, it, it won't drive policy. Because people don't really do what we expect but that which we inspect. Yeah. And until we make it a policy issue and hold our leaders to account to ensure that they come through for our children, for generations to come, and also for the people that we have in our society today who are connected to us, then it won't be a reality. And we just don't want to talk about this because women are the mother, mothers of our nation. And we need right. to take care of it. Many things we do as far, okay, you provide rice, you provide this, you provide that. These are things that also we can also um, make essential products, yes. so essential things that yes. we provide. I just remember now uh, when I was in primary school back then, they used to give girls these things for free because I didn't know what it was. I was like, what's that? Can I have one of it? You know, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I think it should be free for, especially for, I think um, we, can, we can tax the um, companies as one of their CSR. Uh, exactly what I want to say. To yeah. get that available and to make sure that's available, especially for, for rural communities. Um, we have to wrap it up there. Mm -hmm. But who says what concerns one does not concern <clears throat> all? After the break, Shegun raises awareness about a matter that should definitely concern us all. And that's before the chickens come home to roost. You're absolutely uh, right there, um, distinguished treasurer. Uh, challenging wrongdoing in our society is a civic responsibility for each and every citizen. And that's exactly how active citizens are created. Police brutality and the culture of impunity uh, in our society must be such that our laws and our policies and what we bring out of these things reflect society. Talking about the urban population in Africa, for example, because when Nigeria sneezes, Africa catches cold. The Africa definitely will catch cold. So the urban population in Africa is estimated at 43.4% with the current population at 1.3 billion, growing at 2.49% per annum, projected to be 2.5 billion by 2050. So truly, the world is a global village, with Nigeria hitting over 400 million in the same year, of which more than 70% will be youth between 15 to 35 years old. This has led to challenges with policing, high crime rates, dereliction of infrastructure, congestion and acute employment, especially in highly populated urban centers, with an increasing youth population in geometric progression, where one third are unemployed, one third vulnerably employed, one-sixth are in wage employment and 50% underemployed. 
80% of our population are stuck in the informal economy. A survey of women aged 20 to 24 from 16 countries in Africa reveals that women are still not empowered and Nigeria is no different. Imagine over 15 million children are out of school, mostly skewed to the northern part of the country. What precisely do we then expect from our future, given this reality? These are people attacked daily by organized crime syndicates within our derelict home, anachronistic and heavily partisan police structure. Let's look at our civic registration and vital statistics, which is in shambles as it were and has been left deliberately unharmonized just to reinforce the culture of commercializing every engagement of government with the citizenry. People want to ask questions like, what exactly is the uh, uh, right of a citizen in Nigeria? What exactly is government giving to me? What's the value of my citizenry? Government gives absolutely nothing and attempts consistently to tax the air that we breathe. Let's not even start with the huge healthcare access problem. So my position is, is simple. We are advocating that we need to begin to create or galvanize the political will necessary. We need to begin to build that gap or bridge, you know, that, that, that uh, covers the institutional gaps strategically for the sakes of all our children. And how do we start this? First of all, we need to create a critical sense of urgency their awareness campaign, and development of social services and pro bono legal representation nationally for timely interventions, taking advantage of our mobile connectivity to reach ears, eyes, hearts, and minds. It is imperative that we surgically need to raise a critical mass of transformational, youthful leaders and enlightened followers who are easy to govern, difficult to rule, and impossible to enslave towards the delivery of the set mandates in the areas so highlighted. Secondly, it is also necessary that we explore the extant laws that address the issues of concern. This will inform the route of the solution, benefits, and the eventual beneficiaries from that solution. So let us look at this together, and then let me get your takes from the things you've been hearing in society based on uh, society's uh, engagement with the police? Well, for me, you know the point where you said commercializing every activity in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and then you're wondering, ah, what does Nigeria even give to me? Everything as a, you, just the other day I was thinking, okay, I have to go and renew my, nation, my, my what's it called, the driver's yeah, license? license. Okay, you renew license. this, you renew that, you re Everything is commercialized. It's, it's just wearying. It's, it's such a burden sometimes to, to be a citizen here. Yeah. And I yeah. really understand what you mean when you're talking of transformative youth, when you're talking of the burden of unemployment on the nation, the fact that this, this, we owe it to our youth, to our children, to be able to give them something just as they finish. And if they're not getting, the, the something I mean is employment, if they're not getting that, then what is that gap? in between when they're unemployed and when they, I mean, when they leave school and get proper employment. Precisely, again, what about the quality of education that we have now that prepares them almost zero level for life after school? Yeah. That's also important, you know. I think for me, it's, it's deeper than, you know, we always see it. Um, this didn't just start overnight, right? Mm -hmm. Young people, I don't have the sense of ownership. Right. And, and like when I mean ownership, I mean understanding that you're in Nigerian and you have rights. Yeah. That wasn't taught in school. No. So, I mean, when people expect us to just become magicians, like where... But that used to be civic education. Yes. Yeah, which is yeah. true. But what was the content of that? It was loaded, I remember. I, 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 I can't remember anything that has to do with, oh, you know, you're, you're a Nigerian, be proud. You know, the entire time when I was in school, like, primary school, we couldn't wait for the, the National Anthem. We, did, we never actually said it with, with our heart. We just mm -hmm. recited and then go to your class. I was waiting for that perfect time where they, where, where they start singing the, the matching song to the class, which everybody wants to play with. Me. You know, like, <laughs> nobody actually said, and said, you know what, this, this is what the National Pledge is. This is how important it, it is. I went to Russia and I had this 
amazing experience. There was a five year, ten year old playing with a robot. He was trying to design something. I mean, this guy's, you know, young, cute kid. So the first thing you want to do as, a, as an adult is, hey, what's up, high five, right? No. I was going with my high five. This guy held my hands hmm. and shook my hands like this. Properly. Like, the grip, I was, <laughs> I, I, couldn't, I couldn't speak. I was like, oh my God. He understands who he is. Mm. They put it in them from 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 it from from the early stage that you are you're Russian. The interesting thing is, okay, um, I'm a, an early years practitioner, and everything we're talking about has to start from the basics. Yeah. Yeah. Who who am I? Mm. Um, what's my identity as a Nigerian? Yeah. Do you understand? These things are so core that from the foundation, from a two three year old. Mm -hmm he should know what it is that he stands for as it grows to the primary, secondary and everything. Mm -hmm. So the aspect of um, you being cheated or something, you would know based on what the education, the, what yeah. you've been trained to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then the awareness for different aspects of the people in, 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 in places of authority, like mm -hmm. the policeman mm -hmm. or this and that, the training, mental mm -hmm. training of who you are representing, as yeah. opposed to you looking at the citizen as an opponent, yeah. is always what we see. But you know, everything has to be with training, understanding, and what it is that you are standing for. Because if we don't have those aspects of going back to the basics, the education um, sector, the training in organizations, even in our own personal organization. Yeah. Who am I? What's my identity mm. in this organization? Mm. Like Plus TV, what is it that we're known for mm. here? You know, those things are very, very important. Like I tell people, I say I'm Nigerian by birth, African by origin, but citizen of the world. Mm. So whatever I have, I'm carrying it to every place I go. Mm. Not just the passport, the way I behave, mm -hmm. the way the young boy shook you. Mm. All those things are what has to happen in our own mm. space. Yeah. Do you understand? Right. If not, it won't just... What, so what is the identity of a Nigerian? Yeah. No, and I share... Oh, Nafisa, you were going I to say. totally understand what you're saying because um, I wasn't... I didn't have the opportunity to go through civic education in school. What I had was government and, you know, that was the best they could give me at that point in time. I went for my NYC in Ibadan and I discovered that political education, civic education was something that wasn't being taught in the syllabus and I felt that Adults were even making that mistake mm. when it comes down to voting decisions because if you don't understand the system of governments in which your con your country operates, then you literally know nothing, no matter how much education you have. Mm -hmm. So I there was a project that I did during my NYSE year, basically going to schools in Ibadan and talking to the senior secondary school students, because those were the ones that were going to be able to vote in the next election about civic education. So we, I basically went, wrote down the syllabus, wrote down the curriculum, took it to the schools for about a month and said, this is what I mean to teach your students. I mean to be free of charge. I mean to give them books. At the end of the day, we'll give them scholarships, but let's start from here. So it went down to the real basics. Basics was what it is, successful. I'm just it, it, it was, <laughs> curious it was, to know. Yes, it was because they were very interested. They were. It was a new experience for them in the sense that this was something that nobody has taken time out mm. to teach them. We went down to the basics. What is patriotism? Tribalism? Mm. The ordinary things that you see in the marketplace, but you oh. don't know the terms in which to qualify it. Mm. Yeah. You know, basic things like that, that they yeah. don't even understand. And these are people in SS2, SS3. So it was a whole lot. So this is a really important conversation. Right. I, I think it boils down to understanding these things and then putting everything together in a way that mm -hmm. we can have a policy that we can now live by because we are actually engaging culture. Mm -hmm. When a problem is hydra-headed, one strategy can be to tackle it at the root. After the break... Nafisa tackles the root of why girls don't want to run for political office. Over to you, Nafisa. The button is in your hands. Always nice to see you anyways. <laughs> Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. So the moment impressed. you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, a terrible, strategy. A terrible <laughs> strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news.
Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you yeah? can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, very, strategy. Like a terrible <laughs> strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Thanks, Shagun. When there is a mammoth task that requires, in, that requires national engagement, and there is neither willingness nor the execution, the disconnect requires investigation, doesn't it? Young women in our country seem to be interested in anything but politics. We are strong businesswomen and entrepreneurs, activists, environmentalists, directors, movie producers, educationists, pilots, but we seem to shy away at the very mention of the word politics. This is expected given the violent and dark turn our politics has taken. The apathetic nature is natural. For example, the PDP woman that was burned in Kogi State. That was terrible. As it stands, women constitute more than half of Nigeria's population, but research has shown most of these women are just basically voters or not active at all. The best at which you can see them is they are the women leaders and they are the ones signing the rapper with the face of the political candidate. They really are not being pushed for, for leadership positions apart from those that seem to be gender specific. And really, politics shouldn't be gender specific. It's, it's neutral. Why? As young women, we should be concerned with putting forward representatives who would table our interests in the sphere of national discourse. Still, we seem to be we seem to be in the minority, the very little, little like a pinch of salt minority. Politics is the arena where important decisions are made, decisions that talk about our lives, our rights, everything, our bodies. The truth is, and it's common sense really, when women are not around, their interests are not debated, our concerns will never be taken into consideration because there's no one there to advocate for them. Not just women, really, not just any woman, but women who are not women who are self-serving, but vibrant, intelligent, and passionate women whose sole reason for being in office is to serve the people. The truth is there must be an intentional effort, emphasis on intentional, to engage young women in politics because they are needed. Our society needs us. The unborn generation needs us. The other women need us. We are stronger when we are together, our voices united as one, speaking the truth to power, and to be honest, if we do not have young women in politics, then we will have no women in politics. I quite agree with you. And the one that I can't stand is when all that you see women do for politicians and during the uh, campaign season mm -hmm. is Tyrappa. Yes. <laughs> Ashwe B. And generally dance away all the time, dancing and dancing. <laughs> Yellow I should be today, green I should be to tomorrow. I mean, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. It doesn't make it, sense. It it makes women look like you know. It speaks to tokenism. Myopic. Yeah, you know, it's 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 so limiting. And I am passionate about this all the time. We we'll talk about women in politics. Mm. Even if you're not educated, you're mm. illiterate. You're at the grassroots. Mm. It doesn't take away from you. Mm -hmm. it, it it doesn't make you uninformed about what you need in your environment. And we should mm -hmm. be asking politicians when they come to you. Exactly. You should be asking my children, no, Oga. What are you going to give these children? I have this, I have pretty much like the sanitary part thing too. Exactly. Uh, you want to give us uh, some money to, you know, vote buying, <laughs> and you're giving people a certain amount of money to do what? Women at the grassroots, mm -hmm. young girls at the grassroots, you should be smart enough to be able to ask these questions. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Pretty much, Nafisa, what you have talked about, women don't want to get into politics because it's all violent in this part of the world. It's more violent. The more we talk, it looks like the, the lesser we're represented. Yeah, you know what? Guys, okay. I, I think we must begin to uh, situate the gender issue, mm -hmm. you know, as an advocacy that is linked with social justice. 
because there's no such thing as a weaker sex or no such, such things as the uh, other alternative in terms of women, men, they must, there must be, uh, not be any disparity or difference between male and female in as much as the responsibility is there. The will is there, and the capacity, capability, uh, uh, conscientiousness, and the ability to deliver is already evidence. So if we begin to see this as our responsibility to support people who can actually represent us, be it male or female, mm -hmm. we should be able to see this as a problem that affects all society. Because left to me, I would rather have a president that is a woman, because she can feel the pulse on the street better than a man who has ego issues. You understand? So based on that, I think we must begin to see this as uh, something that shows our accountability as a human being to begin to support the female folks in their uh, bid to run for office. Yeah. And I think we should encourage ourselves, our children, our family, female in our uh, offices to actually begin to, you know, raise the awareness as mm -hmm. far as politics is concerned. It is essential. Um, I think for me, it's just like you said, um, get support them yes. when they want to run it's not the problem is not supporting them the problem is like she said getting them interested yes, thank in you. the first place if they know they will um, be supported they yeah will. But, but but like she also said which is what she said was this the 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 culture and the the, the political atmosphere. system the atmosphere it's too i mean i really want i can't say that to you okay um <laughs> i really let me say i really want to go back to my state and run for office right guess what my state is river state interesting you, you definitely oh, like wow. no right you don't want to do that you exactly. don't want to right now even as a man i don't want that i don't want to do that because the way the system the culture the it's killings the, the 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 corruption they've made politics look so so dangerous so gangster so gangster like you have to you have to be a certain way the, the language the tones I don't want to be part of that. Nobody wants to be part of that, right? So the first thing is simplify it. How do we simplify it and make it look relatable, make mm -hmm. it look, con you know, connecting where people can see themselves running for office and being part of something. Exactly. That's the first step. The general system, ha not just for women, but men, young people, it has to be, it has to be rebranded. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what, that's, that's what, that's what I think. That's where, that's where, that's the issue we have to, First of all, tackle and address. Um, okay, let me quickly jump in. Okay. There's, there's a solution in my head. Yeah. Okay, so I am thinking, Nafisa, you've worked in secondary schools. Yes. Why don't we start something like uh, some some sort of um, campaigning for girls? I know some NGO does this sort of thing. So you, but this will be targeted at girls. So you make them run for mm -hmm. office for office while in school so you can run for head girl and yeah. run for this and run for that and just yeah. socialize them to into be honest, yeah you know part of the reason why i feel like i'm really politically enlightened was because i ran for office when i was in secondary school right you, you know, weren't so, appointed i mean you weren't just no, no 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 i ran i ran i did the whole manifestos i told i you know shared awesome. stuff it was a whole typical carnival but it was really fun it was yeah. literally you putting yourself out yeah. there and making yourself accountable to your fellow students yeah. Right. junior be senior be your teachers or whatnot yeah. you know Brilliant. i yeah i ran for i was in ss1 funny enough i wow. ran for assistant dormitory prefect and wow. i won and then we never had any election again but after that i literally became head girl you know it's it was you know it made it normal okay i think Bola is not saying anything no, no, I'm, I'm taking in a lot and the it, listener yeah yeah, the listener. Thank you. yeah, yeah. The listener. no the interesting thing is that i mean I must commend you, first of all, for what you're doing here. Because at the end of the day, it takes a whole village. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, there has to be a tribe of people that are going to try to change that perspective. Mm -hmm. Somebody here said that something about culture. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it or not, even our president said the woman is supposed to be in one part of the house. So what is it that we have been put inside our heads mm -hmm. as women mm -hmm. we have a lot of capacity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know we can we're ch age we're change makers where there's something there's nothing we cannot turn around mm -hmm. why if we don't have a, the mindset and the right support system to push us mm -hmm. because we need each other male yeah. female mm -hmm. then we've lost it mm -hmm. but so going back into the classroom and engage engaging even parents mm -hmm. When we speak to our children, our female daughters, we mm. need to push them, let them have their own identity, know that there's nothing they cannot change. But it takes 
all of us encouraging each mm. other. Like I said in my advocacy, there must be intentional effort to see true change. Here's where you keep us intentional through your feedback. On the 37 billion naira renovation of the House of Assembly, Phantom 2K10 says 37 billion naira to renovate a place that is in working order, but our health care and education system is in a wreck. Not to mention our power supply in the country is also in shambles. This is why more of us should get involved in politics. Still on the same matter, Blessing Agoha says we didn't vote them into that legislature. The ones that entered the right and lawful way are in the minority, so what do you expect? Don't fool yourself. Over 69% of them found their way to that house through their godfathers and their murderous means. Wow, they can never work for your good because the good ones are few. Blessing, I wonder where you got this 69% figure from. At least you acknowledge that there are some good ones, although they are in the minority. On the matter of pregnant schoolgirls, Prince HWC says, what if the partner is no more or not in school? Maybe a mechanic or someone learning a trade. How will that be effective? The best thing to do is to educate our young girls and boys, giving moral education and make them see the consequence of engaging in sexual activities, not only pregnancy, but also an infection. Needs could be a major culprit in this. If the family cannot provide enough, most girls are vulnerable and are easily preyed upon with empty promises. Also, if the male partner happens to be in school, he should face the biggest penalty because the process of carrying a pregnancy is tough enough, so the male should get capital punishment. Interesting perspective. Interesting. Prince, I know you don't mean capital punishment per se, or do you anyway we get your gist? Thank you all for your feedback. We love hearing from you. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com slash the Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Bright Jaja, that is, gives voice to the young and voices. You could say it, as an, it is an extension of my advocacy. The button is now in your hand, Bright. Thanks, Nafisa. Young or old, a nation waxes strong and great when it's appreciated that every voice counts. A popular proverb in Nigeria says, what an elder can see sitting down, a child can't see standing on a tree. They often say to the young, don't speak unless you are asked to. How dare you speak or challenge your elders? My house, my role. That's my favorite, my dad's favorite word. That was the last thing he told me before he disowned me. I can't remember that. I can never forget that one. Okay. One of the greatest problems that has taunted Nigeria's growth is the non-participation of youth in key decision position due to the perception that youth are inexperienced and don't have necessary knowledge for such positions. Around the world, youth are flourishing in various industries from business to politics. They are driving millions of dollars to the economy because they are given the freedom to speak and express their creativity. The culture of honor, respect, loyalty, to elders in exchange for resources has taken away the power, creativity, drive to challenge the status quo. Obey your elders. Do as they say. If not, you will not succeed, succeed in life. That's exactly what we did. And our reality today is opposite of success. If we stood up against them, they would say, you're rude, disrespectful, ungrateful. Our ideas are not valid. They say we don't want to work. We just want easy life. What they don't understand is that the future is soft and we're trying to make, it, make life easy with our ideas. The elders need to follow the footstep of developed countries and understand this. For every thing, there is a time and season. And each time comes with the mental IQ and talent. Every generation has the answer to its time. And if you shut them up, you will never get solution for the present time. They say age comes with experience. But time, change, and experience expires. Your experience of 20 years will not help you understand blockchain technology or social media. You have to learn, unlearn, and relearn. 
from the present generation who easily understand the technology of this time instead of shutting them up. I'd like to end by saying this. Give the youth a chance if you want real change. Oh, wow. Give the youth a chance, chance if you want real change. That's something to chew. That's really something to chew. Um, well done. <laughs> Don't <Okay>. right. <laughs> yeah, I think your thoughts are just like yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Straight to the point, you know, well thought out. Well done. Shagun, you're looking at me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just looking back at uh, the parent, parenting tactics, you know, used by, uh, you know, our uh, parents, our uncles, and the people that, you know, stand as a uh, uh, guardian and all. Mm. These feudal and imperialistic constructs that, you know, if you don't say this, if you don't agree with me, mm. I'm boss, I'm wise, mm. you're stupid, you mm. know, I'm big, you're small, and mm. anything I say is right and you are wrong mm. because you are young. Mm. You know, these, these things need to be addressed because you cannot engage today's youth the same way. Mm. Yeah. If you try, you're going to excommunicate them, yeah. Yeah. you know, and at the same time, you're going to create a gap between yourself and themselves. Mm. And we cannot build a nation without the strength of the youth and the wisdom of, of the, the elders. Mm -hmm. And so without that engagement, we have a problem. I think I would disagree with something, which okay, is no. we cannot be the nation without the strength of the youth and the wisdom of the elders. Nah, we, we're not just, we don't just have strength. We have wisdom. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm trying oh, so to say. Wisdom, no, no. wisdom oh, is oh, Nigeria. No, chill, chill, chill. It's, 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 all, this, it's, it's, it's all this, 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 um, you know, this words, like most of them I, I just said. Young people have wisdom. Like, no, I, I mean, no, no, no. Let, let wisdom me, let me comes with experience. No, that is that that is that is like a conform, conformative ideology. Who said that? Hmm. Who said wisdom comes with experience? Okay, I, I just said it. Experience expires. Experience expires. You might have twenty years experience in media. The next, now people are using phone. Now people are using um, green screen. You don't understand that. You can't understand it if you if you were into media fifteen years ago. Do you get what I'm saying? So, so I don't think I don't think we should have that narrative that you know if you're old then you have experience or you have wisdom. Let me give you one example, just one example. I went to a school like I do this thing where I do like social service in schools and I go to I, like I just go to you know, primary schools actually and I have conversation with the kids. And I went one day and I said I have the I have hundred thousand there and I want to give anybody with the most innovative idea. This is primary four, right? And you know they were all jumping around and this kid he's ten. Is it eight or ten? Around that. And he said, Mr. Bright, I have an idea. And I'm like, what's your idea? And he said, I don't understand why, you know, I can't, just the way you can send me songs from one phone to another through Bluetooth, mm -hmm. I don't understand why I cannot send battery life from one phone to another. Right. Mind blown. Yeah. Mind blown, literally. Like, literally, oh, I have 50%, you have 2%. I can, I can just share, I can my, just share my battery life through yeah. Bluetooth. That, he is 10. So if I shut him up, you probably will never get that idea. He has, he, he doesn't have experience, but he has ideas. He has, he, that's wisdom. Let that's us understand something. Let's just, just right? understand so this construct. Let's not mix up. it up, okay? Um, all ideas are probably wrong, which is why they need to be attacked. They need to be engaged. They need to be tested. So when you say something is wisdom, that means over the years, they are proven mm -hmm. to be true. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. You don't, how many, how many years have these children lived mm -hmm. for you to say the ideas have been proven? But they are nice. They are good. All ideas are attractive, they're ideas, sexy, ideas but be, you need ideas to subject them proven, to test. It will not be proven if it's not executed. So, so that means wisdom will not exist if ideas never actually come into play. Yeah, it starts from somewhere. I don't, I, I don't think they should have that. I think we should redefine a lot of things. Exactly. Especially with time. I agree Please. with you. There's so many things we need to just, like, you know what? Right. Have a new definition for because this is, this is, this is putting the youth, the youth and young people and the next generation in a box. I want to take them out of, out of that box. That's why you said we're going to relearn, unlearn, mm -hmm. unlearn and learn, yeah. which is still part of it. Yeah. Because there still needs to be a balance. Yes, we need to exactly. be able to listen yes. to the youth. They also should be able to listen, listen to what us. Listen is coming yeah. from one side more. No, no, no. Like, hey, I, don't, I think so. there's more awareness <laughs> now. Yeah. Because the youth want to run. We want to, you know, we want to walk. But we can decide that we want to jog. Do you understand? Okay. So there's a balance. Yes, it has so, balance. And a lot of things ha have to be the way, our own perspective of yeah. things, really. Yeah. Because now the, there's a lot of restlessness in the youth because they want to come out, they want to say a lot, but we've kind of confined them to a box. Mm -hmm. And that's where they're going their own way to do what they need to do. So if we as adults don't mm. get our own act together and say, look, these mm. people are geniuses. They can yeah. speak. They have a lot. Mm -hmm. And get to say, okay, this is what you want to do, but how about? Mm. So there's both communication on both sides, listening yeah. 
and receiving also. Well, yes, there is the wisdom of the elders and there yes, is the innovation good. of the young. Yeah. Yes. But we must, and then I agree with you, Bryce, that the, <laughs> the young are also wise. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you see, there must be a meeting point. Just yes. as you said, we yes. must decide to jog. Yes. You know, you want to run, I want to walk, we jog. Yes. So even when technology has overtaken the experience mm -hmm. of the, the, the old, mm -hmm. there are still some things that the old can teach you, even with your technology coming yes. in. Mm -hmm. Yes, like... What, 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 what about the situation whereby they use resources as a um, as a negotiating factor, where your, your parents will say, if you don't do what I want you to do, then I'm not going to fund you anymore. Yes, which that, that you, you said, my house, my rules. Did your father really disown yeah, you? Yeah, of course. I think I was, that was 2011. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. that's what most fathers what, do. Wait, yeah. what did you do? I, I just wanted something different. I just wanted, I wanted to be more. And he said, you have to go through this part because this, I mean, he is, he, 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 had, he had the best interest. Intention. You know, they always have the best intention and interest because they, they see the system and they feel like if you don't do this thing this way, it will, not, it will not end up well. But I had a different perception of that. I knew there was something different out there for me apart from what was aligned. And I started saying, you know what, I'm not going to do this. And he said, okay, if you can't do that, you can live in my house. Hmm. Simple as that. Are you back in the house see. now? Close your for another day. Well, yeah, yeah, but yeah, but me and my dad are cool, we're best friends. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, to be honest, I'm just. I prove myself though. I yeah. prove myself you that. To. See, at the end of the day, to. you know, there's, there's, it, 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 there's more than one way to be an educated man. You don't have to go through one structure. Yeah. The way you present yeah. that also and yes, the basically, yes. and I, I was able to, you know, my path was a different path. But at the end of the day. I mean, it's a success. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting down here with you guys, right? Yeah. So we You're alive. <laughs> well, to drop that in here, just yeah. before we yeah. wrap up. Yeah, to jump yeah. in here, like I said, I'm still an advocate of balance mm -hmm. in whatever we yeah. do. And sorry to drag it a bit, you know, of perspective, but I think it's a major reason why most young people don't revert back to history. You don't yeah. read history. We don't understand history. You know, it's part. It's see, it's part of us. It can also be defined as old wisdom. Yeah. But to be able to move forward in this country, we need to understand yeah. where you're coming from. Yeah. Where you're coming from and history, and yeah. that's that's why I said that no matter what we do, mm. we, there, there needs to be a balance. A like balance. It, like yeah. I said, when you're trying to solve a problem, you need to understand how the problem began yes. in the first place. This advocacy that's dog targeted at the elders, which was intentional, could also <laughs> serve as a wake-up call for the youth. <laughs> After this break, Abim Bola, aka the listener, get us to listen to her as she takes us back to the basics. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. The moment Impressed. you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this and that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, terrible. Like, <laughs> terrible strategy. And because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Mm. The Self moment impressed. you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you yeah. can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a terrible, very, strategy. Very, very terrible <laughs> strategy. And because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Interesting, you know, everything that we've spoken about here today is based on where we're coming from. Everybody's advocacy, I want to believe, is from your background, your experience, or exposure to many things. And when the foundation is faulty, it stands to reason that the building will eventually collapse. As a family life advocate, my topic of choice today will be on the family. Each one of us here is from a family. And whatever we do, it speaks about where we're coming from. The first institution created by God is the family. 
He created the unit for the singular purpose of strengthening each individual for the betterment of themselves, the unit, and the society at large. The family unit should be a place of love, support, refuge, and safety. Core values, high moral standards, and sound ethics must be established and inculcated into each individual within the family. It is very important for each member of, uh, to have a, an identity, a sense of belonging, and a purpose. It is my observation that the family unit in recent times has been under enormous threat and a significant decline in familial relationships, which in turn has reflected in the society. And this is very conspicuous. And that is why each person here is advocating for some inadequacy in the society. Unfulfilled promises, betrayal, emotional, verbal, and physical abuse, strive, Sibling rivalry and estrangement abound. Values are eroded and there's outright moral decadence. I believe that the way people behave towards others and act in the society is indeed a reflection of their background. In the past, traditions were strong. Marriage was deemed sacred. Your word was your bond. Divorce rare and verbal communication was the norm. Technology was not interrupting our conversations as we were more connected and communal, just like today. Research has shown that a quarter of homes in the UK make no more use of the dining table where familiar connections and conversations are majorly made during mealtime. So let's pretend that this is a dining table today and we're all speaking based on events that matter in the society. This trend is also becoming prevalent in Nigeria. Countries that are family-oriented have a better, safer, and more stable society, as we have seen in Finland, Norway, and Australia. And I remember in, um, I think, Finland, men actually take um, paternity leave because they want to be connected to the newborn and to their wives. Every family is unique, with its own personal story. It resonates with the saying that life is not idyllic. Therefore, family life comes with its highs and lows. With life comes with its challenges. Every family has its own challenge. And though we have different backgrounds or come from different aspects of our identity, we accept who we are and we come together as one in a family. Our personal battles and appropriate support of loving family system is very, very important. The weight of various battles can be lightened and burdens much easier as there's always strength in togetherness. I maintain that the most obvious inhibitor for, to family relationships is the philosophy of life, attitude, the lifestyle where we live, and the culture we are brought into, a culture of money, billion, and you have millions, materialism, and success, which causes disconnection and suffocates the real loving interaction that people need and crave for. Though we may be unable to fix the past, we can rewrite our family story by having a family vision, a mission, core values, an identity as a family. What is Shomolu family known for? What is Shagari family known for? A family culture, a tradition, practice, business ventures that will outlive us, that will bind us and be passed on from generation to generation just as the Jews and Indians are known for. It begins with you, Treasure, Bright, Nafisa, and Shergun, and of course, Bimbo. It begins with all of us. Oh, wow. That's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. it. <coughs> family, family, family. Well, to be honest, I totally understand why the family, it's the foundational, it's the first you know, interaction a child has when he or she instantly enters society. It's the, you know, when you talk about children, that's the area, that's the phase of their lives in which they are molded. That's when they understand right from wrong, the truth from a lie. It's what builds them up to become the human. It's the lens. That's when they develop like the lens in which they see society <coughs> through and see other people through. So no one can underestimate what the family, how important the family is in society. To be honest, I feel, not like I feel, I know that because the way our society is structured now, how violent and terrible it might seem at some point because the family system is being eroded. 
Mm. We have a lot of dysfunctional homes today. A lot stories I've heard. Fathers leaving, fighting. There's just there's just a lot of stress on kids. Mm. You know. Mo Sorry. So much. And that's why we have a lot of depression in children, suicidal yes. thoughts, anxiety, anxiety panic what's attacks. The, what's the, what's the, for me, what's the foundation of that? Like, especially when it comes to my generation, yeah. where people get married because of social media, like what they see on social media. <laughs> yes. People focus an entire life, like marriage is forever. When you see a 15, a, a 15 second post and then you're like, I want to get married because of that. Yeah. And you're looking understand. for what to create that whole scenario I so you understand. can post it. People actually get married because they want to post something for, for content. Yes. Why? Really? Oh. Yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, yes. You guys have no idea I what's going so on. So right people, now. Literally, people literally want to have babies because they see pictures of, of, of parents making their babies say things. And then I want to have a baby too. Wow. Do you understand? Like, they don't understand the psychology and the responsibility yes. involved. They don't understand what it takes for you to, you know, come together and spend the rest of your life because it's not about you. Mm. You are transportation. I keep telling people, you not like, please don't take this wrong. Parents are mostly transportation. They bring people into mm -hmm. the world very, very and they ship them. They are transportation accommodation, Airbnb <laughs> and <laughs> Airpiece. You bring them into the world, you bring them to the world, you, you house them, you, you, you teach them the ways, and, and then you, you let, let them go. Them. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So, sure, but you, if you don't understand that, mm. if you don't understand that, you're going to send a lot of people into the world to destroy the world. And that's why we have a lot of problems, especially in the North, where, you know, people just get mm. to, feed to a lot of wives and not understand that you're bringing children to the world and these children are going to be responsible or irresponsible mm. men and women. Mm. If you don't take care of them. Okay, I want to pick on your analogy, please, People. of the dining table. Yes. And the fact that we don't have that rallying point these yes. days anymore. And yes. when we do, we're busy looking at our phones, yes. how technology has disrupted family life. For me, when I go on dates nowadays, whether I have an appointment with you, I put away my phone. Mm -hmm. Because it's so dis distracting and it's it disrupts. And it, I think it shows a lack of respect as well for whoever mm -hmm. you're having a chat with. So first of all, I have started in my own little way. Fantastic. I have a conversation with you. I put my phone away and finish with you one on one, give you the value of that time, mm. you know, and then go back to it. I think we should start from there as yeah. well to begin to value our time together. They say something um, in, in that you don't touch a uh, you don't touch water twice, that you don't touch the river twice. Once that ripple goes, you know, the ripples, it goes. We yeah. really can talk about the family unit as a critical unit without mm. beginning to talk about society as well. Because mm -hmm. society have a lot of influence on, on family, as family have influence on society. So it's a, it's a cyclical thing. Um, there's something also called the social pyramid, where our parents begin to flaunt their kids, you know, introduce them and usher them you know, uh, into a world of competition, mm -hmm. where every child grows up thinking they are alive to be better than their neighbor. Mm -hmm. So when they grow up with that mentality, everything they do is to score a point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know people who went to certain schools just because they want to be better than the neighbor's kid. Mm -hmm. So when you grow up with this, you have a huge gulf in your mm -hmm. heart mm -hmm. that can never be filled by better jobs, by anything. You know, so with this, you have a lot of unfulfilled people spreading hate all over the place. Mm. And that's why you see a lot of people with different colored bags, without ethics, without values, without honors, raising children that will never be catered for. Mm. Now, I have a question to ask. You know, because like I said, we have a very dysfunctional society. And because yeah. of that, we have dysfunctional families that produce dysfunctional children. Right. You know, this is me talking from a little bit of experience, even with my friends and myself as well. So you realize you grow up and you say, this is not, you know, this is not something I want to replicate mm. in my yeah. own society. Because, yeah. you know, you can't exactly help where you've come from, yeah. but you can affect where you're, you're going, going to. Fantastic. So now you have young adults mm. that you know you want to have a happy family and you know where you're coming from is a bit dysfunctional now what are the steps that you take to make sure that you know this what happened doesn't repeat itself i've had friends that said that you know what you know when i got married i didn't i didn't think that what i went through with my parents you know i didn't think those things were going to repeat itself and then i entered my own marriage and i saw myself exhibiting something i'm like no i need to take a break and they would eventually go for therapy for by themselves before taking their husband because they don't want to repeat 
the, the cycle. same the yeah. cycle yeah. the yeah. same mistakes that they they saw yeah, please, uh, I'm, uh, thank you very much for opening up because mm -hmm. i mean many of us act like ostriches and mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of things that happen to us really is uh, is a reflection of where we're coming from mm -hmm. well yeah. as we have explored papering over the cracks is never a recipe for change or restoration and that is certainly not a mandate here on the advocate do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV, TV Africa. I trust we've left you with plenty of food for thought. Till this time next week, when the advocate will be hitting you with loaded topics, no holds barred. Let's keep advocating for a better society and make sure that 2020 counts. Bye. 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 And thank you. Thank you. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong with mm, exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, we can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, very, strategy. Very, very terrible <laughs> strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news.